What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So I know it's been a while since I posted, but I've been working really hard on the website, programming, data collection, uh, all kinds of stuff. So I haven't been just sitting idle. I've been working on stuff for Drew Game Data. I just haven't been able to make many videos recently. But today I've got an interesting video for you. I'm going to talk about how I would uh, better balance the game, bring the AUG, M16, FFAR, all of those in line with what I think they should be in the current meta. And... I'll also talk about the rest of the, the weapons. So I'm going to talk about assault rifles, SMGs, the other tactical rifles, sniper rifles. Just briefly, not I'm not going to go in super depth on all those, but just what I think of the current meta and how I think they could be uh, changed slightly to make it a little little more balanced. But uh, before I jump into that, I want to mention I did up upload a second video on my gameplay channel today. So I've got the the win that the stat squad got. So me, J got exclusive ace and drifter. We got a win when we played together the other day on stream, and it was a ton of fun. Hope to do that again with them sometime. That was that was a pretty cool experience. Um, but yeah, that video is up on my second channel, uh, True Game Data Plays, and I'll link that below if you want to check that out. But uh, yeah, let's jump into it, and I will show you how I would uh, better balance the game. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is the M16 and the AUG. Uh, I think these are as big of a problem as the FFAR. I think a lot of people think the FFAR is more of a problem. I think it depends on what skill bracket you're playing in. Uh, at the upper levels, the M16 and the AUG are disgusting, and uh, you just pretty much have to run them at this point. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is the Axial 3X so scope. So both the AUG and the M16, the meta is to run the Axial 3X, and the reason for that is uh, it has the same zoom as a Car 98 sniper scope, and it has no glint, and both these guns have very little visual recoil. Uh, so it makes it really, really easy to hit targets at range compared to Modern Warfare guns. So on, on Modern Warfare guns, most of the time you have to use like a VLK or something because most of the Modern Warfare guns have a lot more visual recoil than these two guns. Um, so the more zoom you have, the more that visual recoil is amplified. And um, the Axial just has all that zoom with very little visual recoil. So I think to counter that, I think both the M16 and the AUG should have a lower bullet velocity than Modern Warfare guns, so that makes it a little harder to hit shots at range. Um, I use the M16 still over the AUG, and the, the M16's bullet velocity at max is around 950 meters per second right now. And I actually think that that works pretty well. It it It's still relatively easy to hit your shots at range. I mean, I don't want to make it so you can't hit people at range. That would not be... It's not fun for anyone. Um, so I think having a good balanced bullet velocity to kind of kind of balance out how ridiculously good the axial is on both of these uh, is a good idea. So I think the AUG should be brought back in line with the, the M16's bullet velocity, where they should both be just a little bit below 1,000, whereas the Modern Warfare guns can get up to like you know, 1,200 meters per second or 1,250 meters per second. And that helps them hit shots at range, even though they have less zoom and they have more visual recoil. So that's my suggestion there. Okay, the current damage profile for the M16 and the AUG is 40 chest, 40 stomach, 40 extremities, and 72 head, and that's at all ranges. Um, so there's no damage drop-off, so it does the same damage everywhere. Um, and I don't want to nerf these things into the ground, I want them to still be viable, so I'm just proposing some changes that I think would bring them uh, more in line with the other weapons. So um, the first change I would say is add a damage drop-off, so 35 meters is just the damage range I chose, but... These damage profiles are also specifically chosen by me. So the uh, in the first damage drop-off, I don't want it to be able to two-burst anymore because right now, if you get uh, five body shots and one head headshot with your two bursts, so each burst is three shots, so you can two-burst somebody if you do that um, with this damage profile, the 40, 40, 40, 72. So the change that I would make is make it 37, 37, 37, 62. And what that does is that makes... That makes um, so 37, if you do 37 times 5, you get 185. And if you add 62 to that, then you don't quite, that does 247 damage. So if they're full plate, you can't two burst them anymore. And that I think that's really important. And it's still really close. So if you're team firing with somebody, you could still two burst somebody if they have any health off at all, which I think is important because that it needs to still be viable. So... It needs to be able to kill fast in some situations, but not all situations. Um, and adding an extra burst delay to kill when you get a headshot would really, really balance it out, I think, in that first that first damage range. Uh, and then for the 35 meters plus, uh, reduced it down to 28, which is a pretty significant nerf from the 40, but these guns, 
spe specifically the M16, is insanely good at range right now. Like, I feel like there's almost no reason for me to run a sniper rifle. Uh, it's so much more forgiving to just run an M16 and just put a bunch of shots down range that all do 40 damage. So I think it needs a, a I think it needs this nerf at range. I think this would still be viable. So the difference here is, um, currently it takes seven body shots to kill with 40. So if you do 40 times seven, you get 280. So you do 280 damage with uh, seven shots from an M16 or an AUG if they all land. So you don't you can miss two shots in your three bursts at any range to to kill somebody and the change that i made making it 28 damage means it requires all nine of your body shots to land so if you do 28 damage times nine that does 252 damage so uh, i re would require that you literally do not miss a shot to be able to three burst somebody at range and i think that's good um right now I can three burst people at range pretty easily because it's forgiving and it lets me miss, uh, it lets me miss up to two shots out of those nine shots from the three bursts. So I think this change would uh, would make it a lot more balanced. And because it still does a pretty good amount to the head, so if you mix a headshot in there, it's gonna uh, bring it back down to that seven or eight shots to to kill. So I think this change would really uh, really balance out the AUG and the M16. I think they would still be good. I think they'd still be viable. Um, the lower damage profile here, again, because the M16 is so accurate and uh, you have such a high zoom scope with that Axial 3X, I think it would still be very good. I think it would just be more in line with the other weapons. Um, but yeah, that, that's my opinion on the, the AUG and the M16 for how to, how to balance them. All right, let's talk about the FFAR and what makes it so good. So... The first component that makes the FFAR so disgustingly good is the SAS combat stock and the Raider stock. So with the combat stock, you get 170% ADS movement speed while shooting. And with the Raider stock, you get 205% ADS movement speed while shooting, which is uh, crazy. So one of the things that makes hip fire so good normally is that you can move so fast and you can be evasive while you're shooting. Uh, and what these two stocks allow you to do is they allow you to have the accuracy of ADS fire and you actually move faster with the Raider stock than you do while you're hip firing. So I measured this out at like five, I don't remember, 5.05 .05 meters per second or something like that. When the default movement speed of the gun is like 4.7 meters per second, so you literally move faster while you're shooting uh, and ADS with the Raider stock than you do just hip firing normally, which is, which is crazy. And it doesn't make a lot of sense. I like the idea that they're going for here to make it a little more mobile while you're shooting. But that's just way too much. I mean, I, I don't know why it's so high. Um, it gives you both the benefit of the high movement speed and the benefit of the accuracy of ADS fire. So it's just a simple fix. Just nerf these a little bit. Make them... Make the combat stock uh, 100 and... 50% and the Raider stock 160% or something like that. Just reduce them down to the point where hip firing is still going to be faster movement. Reduce them down to the point where you don't literally like take off sprinting when you start shooting the gun because that that just it doesn't make a lot of sense. It it takes an AR and makes it viable as an SMG because one of the things that makes SMGs good is they have a default hip fire spread that's a lot tighter than ARs. So you can't really hip fire an AR, which means that in general with Modern Warfare guns at least, uh, if you ever got in a fight up close, you had to ADS with your AR. And uh, because it's an AR and you have the ADS, your your ADS movement speed is pretty slow, so you're easier to hit. So that kind of balances out ARs up close, even if the <clears throat> even if the ARs still have really good TTKs up close. Uh, the movement speed and the mobility is what should hold them back, even if they have similar TTKs to the SMGs. And that's how it used to be balanced. And with the Raider stock and the combat stock, it's not really balanced that way anymore, and that's kind of what really throws it off. So let's talk about the damage profile as well. Obviously, damage profile is great, too. It kills ridiculously fast. Uh, the only thing that kills faster in the AR category, I believe, is the AS Val with all chest shots. So the first thing I want to talk about before I suggest a new damage profile is how forgiving this damage profile is compared to uh, like the AS Val or the AMAX. So the AS Val and the AMAX both have a fantastic TTK if you look at only chest shots, like ridiculously good TTK. But they get quite a bit worse if you look at extremities. And it turns out that if you do the math for it, 
both the Amax and the Val have to hit all chest shots. You can miss one chest shot and still get the TTK of the chest shot. Whereas the FFAR is different. You can miss up to four chest shots and you still get that same ridiculously fast uh, chest shot TTK. And that's just because of the way the numbers work out when you do the math uh, for bullets to kill and time to kill. And that's just... I think that would be a simple fix, is to make it more... Uh, one, up the TTK a little bit. It's a little too fast. And then, secondly, make it so it's like the AMAX and it's like the AS Val, where you have to hit uh, a high percentage of chest shots rather than being able to miss up to four chest shots and still get that really good chest TTK. I think those two things combined would really balance this out. But I'll, I'll suggest a new damage profile here. All right, so the FFAR right now... This is a comparison between the FFAR and the Ram 7. So ne no attachments on either one. The FFAR has more, more range than the Ram before the first drop off and kills significantly faster in chest shots. If we look at extremities, they get a lot closer, but the FAR still kills faster. So in my opinion, how this should be balanced is uh, the FFAR should kill faster if you hit every single chest shot or almost every single chest shot. But it should be a little bit slower if you hit extremities or stomach shots. So right now it's just faster everywhere. Um, I think it needs to have the potential to kill faster than the RAM because I do think it's a little bit harder to control than the RAM. So if you're really accurate and you hit those chest shots, you should be rewarded. But right now it's super forgiving where you can miss four chest shots. And even if you don't get that, that fast chest CTK, it's still faster than the RAM 7. So yeah, my proposed change would be to uh, bring... The chest shot TTK uh, up a little bit. So one bullet takes 67 milliseconds to fire at 900 RPM, which is the fire rate of the FFAR. So if we look at this, it's at 467 milliseconds. And the Ram 7 is at 561. So we can add a shot to kill for chest shots and bring this 467 up by 67 milliseconds uh, up to like 500 and, uh, 530 milliseconds-ish. That would bring it up to like right in here. So it would be like right, it'd still be faster than the RAM. It's still gonna be faster than the RAM, even if we increase the shots to kill by one. So I think that would be a good change to make. And then uh, the extremities, if we do the same thing with extremities, it would go from 533 milliseconds up to exactly 600 milliseconds if we add one shot to kill. So adding one shot to kill on both chest and extremities, I think would be a really good change. Uh, and it wouldn't be over over nerfing it because you still have the potential to get a TTK that's a lot faster than the RAM, uh, but you have to hit those chest shots and you have to be rewarded for hitting those chest shots, just like the Amax and the AS Val. Those are both guns that are very rewarding for hitting chest shots. Uh, whereas the FFAR right now, it it it's rewarding to hit chest shots, but you don't even have to hit chest shots to kill faster than every other AR pretty much in the game. So uh, that's the change I would make. Let's go talk about the actual numbers to make that happen though. All right, so my proposed new damage profile for the FFAR, first of all, reduce the range. I don't know why. So the FFAR has the fastest TTK of every single assault rifle except the AS Val, and the AS Val is only faster in chest shots and only faster if you hit every single chest shot, basically. So I don't know why it has 36 meters of range. I mean, that's just crazy. It, it shouldn't be the fastest killing AR and have one of the longest default damage ranges. So first thing I want to change is bring that down to 25 meters from 36. Um, and then the damage profile change, we're going to bring the 30, 30, 33 to 27, 27, 31. And this does exactly what I was saying in the, when I was on True Game Data, the website. This will up both the chest and extremities and stomach TTK by one shot, which is 67 milliseconds, which means still going to kill faster than, than the RAM uh, if you hit chest shots, which is what it should do. And it kills a little bit slower than the RAM if you miss those chest shots. So... And it brings it in line with how the other guns are balanced, like the Amax and the AS Val. Instead of just being faster everywhere, this is going to make it faster and reward you if you hit the, the precise shots on the chest and penalize you if you miss those chest shots. So I think this brings it much more in line. And because we're still going to have these Raider stocks and things, I think it'll still be a pretty viable gun to use up close. Um, it won't be as ridiculously overpowered as it is now, but it should still be a viable gun and fun to use. And then for the 25 meters plus, um, I reduced it down to 23, 23, 25, 37. So this puts it more in line with the RAM. So 
The Ram does 23, 23, 23. Um, so this is going to kill faster than the Ram if you hit your shots, but the FFAR is harder to control than the Ram. So out at range, when you're in this 25 meters plus, uh, you're going to struggle to hit your shots compared to the Ram. So I think that it's still okay that it kills faster out there. That's what I listed over here, you know, faster TTK, but it's harder to control than the Ram. So I think this would, this would not nerf the FFAR into the ground. I think it would put it in a good spot. I would make it highly competitive with the other guns and make it a, a really good option still to use with the sniper, uh, which is kind of the slot it should be in, I think. I don't think it should be used as an SMG because it's an AR. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be used as an SMG, except in maybe specific cases. But uh, this would put it more in line with the RAM. Like I said, it would reward you for hitting chest shots, uh, reward you for hitting your shots at range, even though it's harder to control. So I think this would be a really good... A uh, really good way to balance the FFAR. All right, I'm not going to go into as much detail with SMGs, LMGs, and snipers as I did with the specific guns that I think need nerfs. Uh, but I'm just going to briefly talk about uh, each category. So SMGs, right now we have like four viable SMGs, which would be the MAC-10, MP5, Bullfrog, and Cold War MP5. Um, so we have all these different SMGs that are not very viable. There's there's a lot here, you know, they they really need to, in my opinion, they need to bring the TTKs actually down with the SMGs. It doesn't make sense that we have guns like the Milano that kill literally almost half as fast as the FFAR. Like the, the, the SMG should kill faster and that's how you should balance it. They, they should have good sprint to fire time, good mobility, and they should kill a little bit faster than the ARs. Right now, they have good sprint to fire time, they have good mobility, but some of them just have horrible TTKs. And I think you could make the meta for SMGs much more interesting if you brought the TTKs down a little bit and made them a little faster across the board, except the four that are viable. I think we should leave those alone and then just bring all the other ones down, like the KSP, Milano, LC10, AK-74U, the Bison, the ISO, the P90. MP7's close, but not. it's still a little slow. Striker, Fennec's fast, but held back by a mag, which is good. That's a good way to balance a weapon. Held back by a small magazine. Uh, Uzi, AUG, all, of these, all those guns should have a little bit better TTK than they do, in my opinion. And I think that would make the SMG meta much more interesting. It would make it so you could use all kinds of different SMGs, which would be really fun. Uh, you wouldn't be stuck to using one of the four. Thankfully, we have four now. It used to be basically MP5 and MP7 were like the only two you could use. And really, it was mostly the MP5 just because you're up in people's faces and TTA is extremely important up up close because you don't need that damage range. You don't need the uh, you don't need the accuracy as much because you're so close to your target. So I think if they just brought the other TTKs down, it would uh, really make for a, a fun SMG meta. So that's what I'm going to say about SMGs. Again, not going in, in super depth, obviously, like I did with the AUG and the M16 and the FFAR. But... That's my thoughts on the SMG. So LMGs are interesting. Um, I think LMGs should be balanced by having, they, they try to do this already, but should be balanced by having really slow ADS time, really slow movement, slow reload time, but they should kill faster than the ARs. And in some cases that's true, but in general, they still kind of have similar TTKs to the ARs. So I think uh, LMGs could use a TTK buff, just a little one, because we saw what happened during the Bruin meta. We don't want to turn LMGs into uh, the Bruin meta, but just a tiny buff to uh, TTK, I think, would make these guns much more uh, viable to use in Warzone, especially at range. They should have they should have good TTKs at range, just to balance out the bad movement and the the bad reload time and bad ADS time. Tactical rifles, obviously. I talked about the AUG and the M16. Um, I think uh, the Type 63 should have much better bullet velocity than it does. I think the DMR should have a little bit better bullet velocity than it does. Um, the Type 63 was always much harder to use than the DMR because of the visual recoil. So I felt like the nerfs to the DMR were kind of... I don't know, maybe not overkill, but a little bit a little bit too much for the Type 63. Like, I don't think they should have nerfed them the same amount like they did. Like, there's literally no reason to use the Type 63 right now because it kills the same speed as the DMR but has way worse recoil. So, I don't know. I think I think they slightly overdid it with the bullet velocity nerfs on both those guns. And I think if they just brought the bullet velocity back up, they'd both be really viable again. So, quickly, I want to talk about the balance of the ARs. Um, 
The ARs were decently balanced before the Cold War integration, and now we have a bunch more Cold War guns, obviously. And the thing that really holds the Cold War guns back from being like the main weapon that you could use is two things. It's one, the optics. So there's no VLK 3.0 optic for the uh, for the Cold War guns. If you're running on PC and you're using affected ADS, uh, the uh, the 2x optic, the let me see what it's called. The Vision Tech 2X, if you're on PC, high FOV, affected FOV, this has like no zoom. It's it's super, super low zoom compared to like a VLK even. So it's hard to use that. And then the Axial 3X is the opposite. The Axial 3X, like I said earlier, has the same zoom as the Car 98 Sniper Scope. So this gives you so much recoil, so much visual recoil, so much effective recoil that you have to correct for with these guns that it's not really viable either. I mean, there's a reason we don't put sniper scopes on Modern Warfare ARs. Like, it, it's just not a super practical thing to do and there's a decent amount of recoil. So that's one of the things that holds them back. The other thing that holds them back is that there's no commando foregrip. Commando foregrip helps with visual recoil, helps with side-to-side -side bounce, helps with vertical recoil a little bit, and just really stabilizes the guns. Um, the field agent foregrip does not quite do uh, as much as the... Um, as the commando foregrip. So I think those two things, if we added a scope that was between the Vision Tech 2X, the Axial 3X, and we added a commando foregrip, I think all of a sudden half of these Cold War ARs would become viable options for long range, which would be really cool and it'd be a really easy fix. So I think I think that is what they should do for uh, the Cold War ARs to make them a little more viable. All right, so last up, I'm going to talk about sniper rifles. I think they've done a pretty good job of balancing sniper rifles, actually. So I'm going to include the SPR and the Car 98 in this. So right now, the LW3, the Tundra, has the fastest bullet velocity in the game, but it's balanced by having horrible idle sway, which I think is an interesting way to balance it because you can go prone to reduce your idle sway. You can hold your breath to reduce idle sway. Um, I don't like that the scopes have no glint. I don't think that makes any sense at all. I think the scopes, uh, the scopes that have as much zoom as a sniper scope should have glint just across the board, Modern Warfare and Cold War. I don't know why they don't yet, but probably just a low priority item for them to fix. Um, M82, I think, could use a slight bullet velocity buff. It has very little bullet drop. If you've seen my sniper video uh, about bullet drops and bullet velocities, uh, you'll know the M82 and the Rytec both have very little bullet drop, even though they have low bullet velocity. So I think with a slight bullet velocity buff, You'd see a lot more M82s. Hellington's in a, an interesting spot where it has slightly better bullet velocity than Car 98, but slightly worse ADS times. And you can run a no-glint build with the Axial 3X or the Royal and Cross 4X. So that puts the Pellington in a unique spot, again, which kind of balances it in with the Car 98, which I like a lot. Um, HDR is still kind of the long-range king just because it has uh, decent ADS times, really good bullet velocity, and uh, great optics. Something else that the Tundra is balanced by is it doesn't have any optics that are quite as good as like the HDR's variable zoom, especially the uh, the oceanographer variable zoom and the CDL uh, variable zoom scopes. Those are really, really good. Uh, and then the AX50. Uh, AX50 is in an interesting spot. It's you can't you're never going to have every gun be viable and the AX50 is decent but it's just one of those guns that's like really why statistically why would you use it over like an hdr because they have like the same ads time the hdr just has better bullet velocity and uh, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to use the ax50 um i know the the very satisfying gun to use it has great audio and good recoil and things but statistically the hdr is just a better choice so i mean i'm fine with that there's they're never all going to be viable so you can still use it if you like it. It's not like horribly, horribly bad, but it's just not quite as good as like the HDR. Uh, Dragonov, again, I haven't used it very much. I know people make fun of it, but I believe it's a two-shot chest shot kill, which is actually not awful. It's not a sniper rifle. It's not going to be a one-shot headshot, but um, I think it's a two-shot head or chest shot, which is kind of interesting, actually. I've never really played with it, but I don't think it's very good. But I do think it's in an interesting spot, interestingly balanced. So it is what it is. They're never always going to be balanced. And then we have the SPR, which is kind of the jack of all trades. Uh, when you build the SPR with normal rounds, it has one of the highest bullet velocities and one of the lowest bullet drops. It also has pretty good ADS times. 
but it does ADS slower than the Car 98. So with Car 98, you can use this up close. It has really good ADS times. It has decent bullet velocity. It's the aggressive sniper of the group. So I feel like these are all balanced pretty well. They all have their specific spot where they're really good or they're just good everywhere. Um, overall, I think snipers are pretty well balanced right now. All right, everybody. I hope you found the video insightful and interesting. Um, I'm going to try to start getting some more videos out. I know I've been not on YouTube very much recently. I think I've only had like one video in the last week or a little bit more even. So I'm going to try to start getting at least a couple videos out a week. I'm really busy with the website right now, trying to maintain everything and get data up to date. But we're kind of getting caught up at this point. I'm getting really close to being caught up on data. So uh, we'll see. I might be able to start posting more often. But yep, I appreciate you guys watching and I hope you have a great day. And I'll see you guys all in the next video.